Thank you for joining us for another episode of CryptoCurrent. Just one quick reminder. CryptoCurrent is a cryptocurrency and blockchain education platform that's bridging the gap between the curious newcomers who are just discovering the space and the thought leaders who are shaping its future. All opinions expressed by Richard Carthon, the CryptoCurrent team, and their guests on this show are exclusively their own opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed by Richard, the team, and their guests as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or to follow his financial advice. This show and any other cryptocurrency production is exclusively for informational purposes. What's up, everyone? Your host here, Richard Carthon, coming to you with another episode of Cryptocurrent. And I am excited to be speaking with a really, really, really cool project in person working on something that I know I'm excited to learn more about, and I'm sure you will too. It's all about community. It's all about being able to build amazing communities and be able to give back to them in a really unique way that hasn't been done, I think, in the way that they are going about it. Today, we have Sarah, who is the CEO at GeoJam. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. Um, and of course, for all of those listening, make sure you come and check us out on YouTube. Uh, she has a really cool setup uh, that I think you'll really enjoy to be able to come in and watch. But, you know, Sarah, as we dive into this, before we explore all the things you're doing at GeoJam, first, I want to learn a little bit more about you. Can you give us a little background on yourself? Of course. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've sold my first company when I was 20 and have been obsessive over just like the social media industry. And when I first heard about Ethereum, I thought that there needed to be a decentralized social network. I started mining Ethereum in 2015 and I've just been obsessed over decentralization and community and what it could do for creators and artists and bringing that sense of ownership back to the fans and really like redirect the flow of incentives like it hasn't been done any before any time before and the blockchain really allows that and so I have a background in social media as well as music sponsorships and experiential marketing and I'm also a UX designer and really product heavy CEO that is the perfect formula for what you're building over at GeoGem so first of all it, it, it's always a huge accomplishment to be able to go through an acquisition. The fact that you're able to do that in your, your 20s just sets you up for this road to success. So coming from you know, Web 2.0, being in social media, and, and just seeing how all of these different platforms where basically your end user is the product because they're the ones that are you know, making you all the money and they're not really reaping the benefits of the ownership of the data and the transactions that they're doing for that platform, being able to turn it on its head, create decentralization, and create ownership for participation in these different types of ecosystems, you're like, okay, here's this unique opportunity. I know how to create this. I'm going to go do it. It, it. Is that how this kind of came into fruition of like when you identified, here's, a, here's an issue and now I'm going to try to go tackle that? Yeah. So originally I started writing our first white paper probably in 2017. And then I just, I, it was like everything was going kind of crazy at that point. There was a lot of ICOs at the time. And when I, but I didn't have like the right team. It was just kind of like me in a dark dungeon thinking of it. <laughs> and um, then I met my co-founder, Sam. And when I originally had met him, he said, okay, let's do this. But I really think it's too early to do crypto. So we always knew that we were eventually going to build it on the blockchain, but we started um, with jam points. So you would come onto the platform. We also started in music. So you connected through your Spotify or your Apple music and you would earn points. And with those points, you can buy things in the jam shop. And right away, we were already rewarding fans for promoting the artists and listening and engaging with the music and really spreading the word about a new album or a merch drop or whatever it might be and turning the fans into like the army for the artist. And so the points were, they didn't have a supply, like a set supply or 
it was really just like, they were just a point system, kind of like airline miles. And we realized very quickly, this needs to be a token. And we have like true utility that's redirecting the flows of incentives back in the hands of the fans and the creators. But if we don't have a token, it's just like, there's not that value that it needs to, it's the perfect company to be built on the blockchain. So about almost a year ago, we decided to make this switch and it's been just quite, quite the journey. And I think we've learned so much. And now it's like, we have this whole new product coming out that is really going to tackle things like I never thought it would. Which is really exciting. So you, you, you've been building, you, you identified this problem, you then saw how your audience was engaging with it and realized that there could be a, a better solution, which went into the, the tokens, right? So you, you have the, the jam token. So it's a utility token intended to be used on the GeoGem platform for the, to power the creator and artist communities. And you have now have a way for that token to be able to do things like put on proposals and, and other things like that. So walk us through the, the, the platform. So someone goes on to GeoGem, what are some of the things that they're going to be able to, to do and experience? So there's a community for everyone. Either you can join a community. Some of the times they're token gated. So you might have to have an NFT to join the community, Very, like kind of like a Discord channel, or you could just create one with you and your friends, or you can start a new one. So it's all about community. And then within these communities, they're kind of like these micro economies with their own set of governance. So let's say if you were in a, the skateboarding community with Nyjah Houston, who's like a four-time world champion. You can go in there and you could propose ideas to him, like do this um, skate move or skate trick. And then also, and then he would have to upload the proof that he did it and people are using jam. And then once he uploads the proof, he gets the jam that people pull together. So it's really getting the creators to do things and that you wouldn't, t- like you get to be a part of content creation and we want people to experience those moments together. And then from there, there's polls. So like, what should be my next merch drop or what should my next skateboard design my skateboard for me, my skateboard line and all the fans can submit it. So there's polls, proposals, and also competitions. And we would just make it super fun. And it's kind of like a new take on governance and giving all these creators this sense of decentralization where the fans really get to be a part of their business. Which is really cool, right? So being able to provide that true fandom, being able to have the fans be able to decide the direction or, or different things that uh, the creative or the, the, uh, the creative ultimately being able to go and implement, but also creating that, that, that strong user base that is, is bringing everyone together to, to have it be in a, a cohesive light and participate in some of the ownership of, of the things that are going on. So I know that you have some really cool examples. I, one being a, a recent thing that you just did with Mariah Carey. Can you give us a little bit more information on that? Yeah. So on GeoJam, every community can have a jam shop as well. So in the jam shop, it could be hosted by the creator. The community can put things into it as well. And so we just did our first, we launched a jam shop. That was the first one that actually accepts our token jam. And our first big experience was all for charity with Mariah Carey. And she did a boarding pass NFT with her voiceover that said, prepare to fly. And then the real utility behind the actual NFT was that you got to fly on a private jet with her to the Songwriters Hall of Fame ceremony where she was inducted, which was a huge moment for her. And it was, it just did extremely well. And it was, it obviously like right now, I mean, we're in a crazy time. And so it did really well for where we're at. And it was so exciting just to see the fans and Mariah interact. And Mariah's our executive advisor. She's the very first artist to ever come on board. And in that moment, just being there with the fans, it was like, she's the perfect artist to be here because she loves her fans so much. And it was just such an amazing moment to see how an NFT can be used on, in our jam shop beyond just the art. Right. Which is pretty remarkable that one, she, she came on and she did it for charity. And in in this like very happy moment and, and very huge achievement of her life, being able to bring a fan or a couple of fans on that experience with her. And when you look across the amount of possibilities that uh, different uh, people who will come on your platform and, and creatives, uh, creators being able to engage with their fans on, on a new level, like, what are the like, possibilities that you see happening on GeoGem? I think that's, what's the mo- that's the most exciting part. And I really am excited for the new platform because 
before this, we were working in a very decentralized form. Like it would be like our team coming up with all the experiences. We would get an artist or an athlete or somebody. We'd be like, okay, this is what we should do for them. And then we'd come up with it. And then we put it into the jam shop. But, and they were amazing, like playing video games, cooking, um, you'd be in a music video. We just did a music video shoot with murder beats and a fan was in it. And it was like the crazy, like huge talent which I won't say, but it's coming out July 8th. And like a fan was in this and a part of this moment. But usually it's us coming up with it, presenting it to the artist team. And they need that. They need that support because they have so much, like so many things going on. But with the new GeoGM and allowing the fans, it's not about us coming up with the craziest things. It's about the fans proposing what they want to do with this artist. So the opportunities are endless. And I think it's better when we can all have a voice and it's not just a, t- a centralized team, a five, a creative team being like, this is what we should do. But like the entire community gets to have a say and like, we really want to do this. And it's no more guessing. And that's what's really fun is we can find out what is truly important to this community and these fans and the artists can find that out too. You you brought up a really interesting point of like, you came in to creating GeoGem to make it decentralized, but to kind of get it off of its feet and to get things going, you had to set it up in such a centralized way to, to prove the model and, and to, to kind of have that bridge going into uh, more of a decentralized fashion. When you look across like how you keep bridging that gap between Web 2.0 to Web 3.0, and and especially as you're onboarding talent like your creators or, or even uh, your fans that are going to be coming on to use this platform. How has that challenge been to, you know, bring it to a place to where it is now to where, like you're saying on the the newest and updated platform where now your users can really go and start implementing these proposals themselves? Yeah, it's been, we definitely had some really good traction going into the switch, I think. And that really helped us definitely to prove the model. And at first I did not want to do a Web2 platform at all. But my co-founder, Sam, was like, no, we're doing this this way. And I'm glad I trusted him because it was definitely the right decision for us personally. It just, it worked out because probably when we started the company in 2019, like launched in 2020, I don't think people were ready for like the big, like Mariah Carey, if I came in there, I'm like, we're going to, we're a crypto company. We're a decentralized web three social platform. Like she would have been like, what are you talking about? But now the artists, they, they're, we have this like place that they already trust us. So if they're going to go into web three, which most creators and most celebrities are now willing to do, they're going to go with somebody they trust. And we happen to be that trusted source. So that's been really helpful. I think the transition from jam points to Jam, it was such a natural one for us that it just made sense because we already were training people on this rewards-based economy and this utility. Like you engage and you engage to earn. We were already doing that, but now there's real value behind the digital currency. So that's what's really exciting. So for us, it's been a great transition. I think what's most exciting is it's almost like you have so many people to help you all the time. In, compared to like web two, where you guys are just like, okay, what do we do? What do we do next? And then in web three, you can be so transparent. You can be like, this is where we need help, who in the community can help us. And that's been so exciting. And that's what we want to do for all companies and for all creators is give them access to their community so that they can get more done and make all of their dreams come true. And you just brought up a, a core feature of what I think web 3.0 is all about is the power of ownership and uh, and being able to be a part of the the community that makes decisions and to be able to reap the benefits of that. So in you know Web 1.0, it was all about read. You basically create a website, do a thing, and you, people can just go and observe it. Web 2.0 is about read, write, being able to communicate. Uh, but again, usually your end user is the product. In Web 3.0, you can now participate and be rewarded for the participation. And what it looks like, you know, GeoJam is allowing is to reap those rewards, be able to be part of that opportunity. But then also, if you participate enough, be able to go and experience these amazing things with their with their actual person or artist or or athlete or whomever, and, and go and have a part of that experience just by being a participant, which I think is really remarkable. Exactly. That's like what we're here to do. We just really want to 
Like fans should be rewarded for the work that they put in because creators wouldn't be anything without their fans. And so that's like exciting is that you could become a fan and that could be like, if you're a really good fan that you, maybe you can make a living off of it. Like I don't, we're just really wanting to reward them in unique and fun. We want to like watching the fans on the private jet with Mariah Carey. We've also done the private jet ride with 24 K golden before, but just seeing that is just like understanding the power of experiencing moments together. And this is all because fans are engaging and promoting the artist and the artist now doesn't need a marketing team. They don't need all of that because they have their community. And I think that's what's so, so exciting. And I just can't wait to see what the future looks like if the community has a say and not just participation, but actual like jobs within this community. You're in charge. Like we can create this new sense of ownership all around a specific creator, a brand or an interest or anything it might be. And like you said, this is providing opportunities around creating your own ecosystems and having people who actively participate and, and help to have this creator's own, not just influence, but uh, fandom grow. They can now immediately reap those rewards and, and being a key figure in, in doing that and, and allowing that type of direct access is something that is revolutionary in its own place. But I think having the right platform to make that onboarding super easy and fluid. Uh, it, it looks like GeoJam is a, a really good place to, to start that. So I, I know you said back in 2019, going into 2020 is when y'all launched and now y'all basically had, you know, three years of, of really refining all of this. What do you think have been some of those like key lessons that you've been able to take away and, and apply into, into building this and has kind of set you up for the success that you're kind of uh, on, on track to go and get? Yeah, I think one of the key lessons is definitely just things are always really fast pacing. We also like, right as we were ready to launch, the pandemic hit. So that definitely like threw us off a little bit because originally it was about live experiences. Like you're going to go backstage at a concert, you're going to do this. And so that was like our first major pivot is just realizing like, how do we get this so that people can do it every day? And it ended up working in our favor just because people were craving this sort of connection and that they couldn't get anymore through a con like at a concert. So we created those once in a lifetime experiences. We put um, a fan fans on billboards with Machine Gun Kelly and we did like virtual things. And that was our first big pivot. And I think it was really scary, but overall it was definitely the right decision. So to not be scared and also going from web, going to web three, I think that was a big transition just because it was, it was major. Like we were going to go decentralized versus being like, it was completely different than what we were used to, but just not being scared and just making sure that you're ahead of the times is the biggest lesson that we've learned. And we're always trying to seek how can we be the most innovative and really change the way that people think and how communities are formed. And that's really what we're here to do. And so it's just been really fun and getting there's been so many lessons of just hard work and there's just, there's no way we'll ever let this fail because we believe in it so much. Right. And again, having the resilience to go against all the various hurdles that life was throwing uh, from building this during a, a crypto bear market, going through uh, COVID uh, when you're trying to do things in, in real life, also transitioning from web two to web three, also trying to get your talent to understand like this is the future and bringing them on to create all of that. There's a ton of hurdles yet y'all have continues to find ways to, to keep moving it forward. And that resilience I think is going to keep driving a GeoGem to be the, the forefront of where creators want to come and create this fandom with their, with their user base. Uh, another question that kind of came up was, do you have to be one of these superstars in, in order to be able to come on GeoGem and participate or, or, you know, if, if someone's listening to this right now, they're like, well, I have a pretty sizable uh, fan base and I really want to be able to connect with them and, and provide them unique experiences. Like who is able to come on and, and use GeoGem? Of course we have a wide range of A-list talent, but we're all creators and that's what we firmly believe. Like we want to be responsible for someone become starting from zero and coming up and anybody can come on here and create. Like we always use the example of like, what's the bachelorette party proposing to each other? Or just like I, I one of our um, people on our team, Alicia, like she's been using it to ask like what she's going to sing at karaoke. We have somebody else drinking bottle of hot sauce. Like we've just been, it's like funny. It just becomes kind of like that TikTok-esque 
thing that you can use that anybody can use. And really it's for everyone. It's for the NFT communities. It's for the creator communities, the A-listers, the micro influencers. We really built this so that it can be something for everyone. Which is great. And having that access, having that type of platform that anyone can come on and immediately start participating in is, is a good onboard. So for everyone listening right now, and they're like, okay, this sounds awesome. I want to come on and I want to be onboarding. Kind of walk me through that process of like, what does that look like? Yeah. So right now you can, we have an app in the app store, which is strictly on GeoJam Music, but you can also check out our website, geojam.com. There's a place where you can sign up for early access to get into our beta um, right now. And that's where you'll be able to start seeing all of these new features that we've been talking about. And you can also check out our jam shop um, on our website as well, where we have some other cool experiences. Perfect. Um, well, uh, everyone listening, make sure you go and check that out. Uh, Sarah, as we kind of wrap up here, I always like to finish with a couple of fun questions. And this one's going to be kind of more entrepreneurial and in, intended, you know, going through a successful acquisition, starting multiple startups and going through all of this. If you could take two pieces of wisdom and impart it to yourself when you first started building, uh, what would you tell yourself? I would say one of the big ones is this is going to be really hard. That it, I would I just wanted someone to tell me this is going to be really hard. But if you get up the fastest, that's when you have the best chance of winning. So those who get knocked down and stay down, that's not the model. You have to just get back up really fast and keep running for it. And that always be learning. Like you never know more than anybody else. And just getting that feedback is always important, but also standing true to your mission is the most important thing. Absolutely. I think those are two great uh, gems and uh, really good reminders for a lot of our listeners here who are uh, building themselves or, or have ambitions on building or being part of a, a Web3 startup or any type of startup for that matter. But um, you've given us a lot of really good information. I, I know that I personally am excited to go and check out GeoGem myself. But as we wrap up here, what is a final thought that you want to leave with all the listeners? I would want to say that making decisions just got fun. And that if you come to GeoGM, you're just going to have so much fun and you're going to be able to engage like you never have before. And there's going to be adventure and you're going to get to experience moments with the people that you love most. Excellent. Well, um, for all those who are, again, looking to engage with GeoGM and connect with you potentially, what are ways that they can do that? They can reach out on Telegram. Also, my email is sarah at geogam.com. Sarah with an H. Perfect. Well, again, Sarah, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Uh, for everyone listening, make sure you go and check out GeoJam. And as always, 